What's happening, everyone? It is Mike from the Hardcover Comic here. Welcome. Today, we're going to talk about five horror comics that I really thoroughly enjoyed and I want to recommend on to other people. If you're a fan of horror comics, you know it's not always easy to come by a good one. So I've got five recommendations here that I highly recommend for all the horror supernatural fans out there looking for a, a, a good read to keep them intrigued. Let's dive in. Before we get started, real quick, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. We post content daily, and by subscribing, you will know when we post a new video or go live with the live stream like we do late at nights spontaneously. Um, check out Dr. Squatch if you haven't already. They're one of our sponsors, and they basically offer a soap and men's health care and grooming product subscription service uh, where they'll deliver things to your door every month depending on what you want. Soaps are their big thing. They have awesome scents. The most recent one was a cold brew one that makes you smell like an iced mocha, according to Matt. So very cool. Check them out with a link down in the description below. You'll get free shipping on the entire life of your subscription. Um, there's also a link down there for our Patreon where we're doing hardcover comic giveaways every month. Um, we'll see what's going to happen next month. Might be two deluxes, might be an omnibus. Very, very exciting stuff there. We give away digital codes and all that too. So check it out for more uh, details. Um, there's a link down in the description below uh, to take you to our page there. But Horror comics, like I said uh, a little earlier, a little tease, um, it's very hard sometimes to find a really good horror comic, so I've got five that I, I sort of are my go-to when someone asks me for horror comic recommendations, and these are modern horror comics, right, so I know there are a lot of folks who love the old eerie and creepy stuff, I'm not mentioning that, this is modern stuff that you can read and, and recommend to someone that they can easily pick up and read, um, so let's, let's dive into our first book here. First up is a book that I've spoken about many, many times. It's a splendid, splendid book. There are 20, 21 issues out currently. It is an Image Comics book called Gideon Falls, written by one of my favorite writers, Jeff Lemire, with artwork by Andrea Sorrentino. Uh, they are a killer team together, having worked on plenty of titles like Green Arrow, Joker Killer Smile, and now Gideon Falls. Um, Gideon Falls is a, a horror book, an absolute horror book. Um, uh, about a town called Gideon Falls. It's a small little town, um, and we get introduced to two characters that we pr uh, primarily follow, uh, a gentleman named Norton and a gentleman named Father Wilfred. And uh, basically, these two characters are, uh, destiny has them colliding together, um, but the way that it happens involving this black barn um, and all this craziness uh, that ensues within Gideon Falls, it's, it, it's a really great psychological thriller um, with some really great horrific panels. Really, the atmosphere is... Uh, very Stephen Kingish. Um, it's it's great. It's awesome. Uh, the the creative team nails it. You know, there's very creepy characters. Andrea Sorrentino's artwork is super freaky right from the first issue, um, especially when you get introduced to the Black Barn uh, and the way you get introduced to it is it's 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 incredible. And like I've said before, Andrea Sorrentino's artwork is some next level stuff here. Some of the two page spreads he does um, are weird signs and, and, and hieroglyphs and stuff it's it's absolutely brilliant work um i can't wait to see where it goes i'm waiting for the deluxe editions to drop i'm sure we're gonna get them as uh, most jeff lemire books do um, so hopefully you know within the year we'll see an announcement for the first volume but that's my first recommendation is gideon falls by jeff lemire and andrea sorrentino next up is a book that i have uh, a people a lot of people have said i don't mention this book at all and i should and they're right um it's a book i don't talk about enough fatal by ed brubaker and sean phillips um, I believe with Dave Stewart doing the colors. Fatal is one of the the first books really that got me into this creative team. Um, it's a it, the reason it falls under horror is because it is a horror. These guys are known to do a lot of crime noir stuff, and they did that here with a horror twist to it. A nice occult crime noir supernatural book. Um, if you're a fan of anything, you know, Lovecraft, the whole uh, mythology behind Cthulhu and the Elder Gods, this is a great book for you because they're heavily involved uh, within this series. And, and while it does have that crime noir feel, it's very horrific um, in terms of even the ideas that are explored here. So it follows a character named Josephine, who is a woman, uh, a very mysterious woman that you learn more and more about throughout the, the, the story here. And um, you basically learn about all the men in her life and, and how she's affecting them and how she's manipulating them and, and how they're basically, you know, what's happening with this Hansel guy and this uh, occult group that's chasing after them. It's really quite thrilling. Um, it can drag on at times a little bit um, or sort of seem like it's it's spinning in circles, but it's a really great ride while you're at it. Um, Sean Phillips and Dave Stewart's are, uh, you know, the pencil and coloring is absolutely beautiful. It's a stunning book with incredible artwork. 
um, really great dialogue and, and good character introspection. And it's, it's horrific, not only, you know, in the sense of artwork, but also the ideas that are explored here with this character, Josephine, and what she's capable of and the way she affects people's lives. It's, it's, pretty, it's pretty freaky to think about, especially as a guy, but uh, I, I really love Fatal. And as a horror comic, it definitely stands out as a unique one. This is a, a great, great little book here, Nameless by Grant Morrison and Chris Burnham, published by Image Comics, was a six-issue miniseries um, that was a very, very trippy series. Um, I've read this book four or five times at this point, um, and finally I feel like I've retained everything as, as much as I possibly can. I'm sure I didn't retain everything, though. Um, it's a really fascinating book about the idea of this sort of uh, fifth planet in the solar system called Marduk that existed in the anti-universe and um, over the course of 15,000 years there was a battle between the outsiders and the titans this epic scale battle and things happened um, but basically the planet Marduk disappeared it, it exploded it got destroyed but the prison Zibalba was released and and so this prison Zibalba is on a crash course with earth and uh, this team is assigned a mission with with a character who uh, you primarily follow from the start of the story uh, his name is he has no name his name's nameless um, and which does play a key part in the story. He's a very occult, supernatural sort of character, almost like a John Constantine. And it sort of follows his adventure with the space crew out into space uh, to basically encounter Zibalba and craziness ensues from there. It's a, a really um, great Morrison book. It's a very Morrison book. Uh, everything about this book is Morrison from referencing, you know, Enioch language from the 16th century to you know, the, the fornication in the book, all, it's craziness, absolute craziness, but it's really got a lot of horrific artwork and panels, it's, and it's, it's terrifying to see these things, they're very gruesome, but the, the idea of it, again, this, this huge grand idea, you know, uh, like a, a, a god-level idea of horror um, on a scale so big, it's, it's hard to even fathom. Um, it, it's it's crazy. It's pretty crazy. And again, there's some horrific artwork in here as well. Some shock factor stuff for sure uh, that Chris Burnham draws beautifully. It's a, again, it's a book you're going to revisit over and over again because it has a lot to give. Uh, and it's a very, you know, it's a very Grant Morrison story, very confusing, very compressed um, with a lot of goofiness and weirdness to it that you need to sort of uh, decipher. But it's fantastic if you put in the time. I, I, as a horror story, it definitely stands out uh, and is absolutely unique. It's six issues too, so you don't have to dive in too much. But can't recommend it enough nameless another series i am patiently waiting to get deluxes for is ice cream man ice cream man is written by w maxwell prince with artwork by martin marazzo a killer creative team i didn't know any of these gentlemen before this whole ice cream man thing started but i know them well now ice cream man is an anthology series what that means is every issue you will be getting a different story all of it centers around the ice cream man uh, it's it's really, really fantastic. Uh, the stories can be, you know, sort of a goosebump flavor or uh, a slice of life flavor. They can get real trippy and real weird and real creepy. Um, there's so much variety within the stories, but there's always that underlying creepiness whenever you see the ice cream man and what part he's going to play in this story. Um, some of the stories are really gruesome and just outright horrific. Um, there's one I remember in, in particular where it follows three different storylines of this man's life. And uh, that was real freaky. Uh, it's, it's a really fascinating experimental series. And with each issue, again, you can jump in at any point and, and you'll be perfectly fine with the series because each issue will take you through a completely new story start to finish. Um, they'll get emotional. They get definitely freaky. And the artwork by Martin Morazzo can get so... Uh, gruesome and horrific and creepy the atmosphere oh it's uh it's really really wonderful i can't recommend ice cream man enough and i know i'm saying that for all these titles but seriously it's so cool i didn't think i would like an anthology series but uh, it's happening it's it's one of the best series i've read uh to in the probably in the past decade last but not least rachel rising a terry moore title uh written and drawn completely by him it is a black and white total there is no coloring here just pencils and inks um, it's a, a huge, huge series. As you can see, there's a little omnibus that was uh, done for it. Um, but it's a fantastic uh, horror supernatural series. The story outright starts out with this uh, female, Rachel, sort of 
digging herself out of her own grave. Um, she, you know, realizes she was murdered and buried somewhere, and for some reason she's still alive. Um, and that's where it picks up. That's literally how the first, you know, first five, six pages are. That's, what, that's what's happening. Um, and things start getting crazy from there. You start finding out a little bit of history uh, about the area she's in, how it may have related to certain trials in the past. Um, it's really, really quite fascinating. There's a lot of really great horrific elements, and while there's no shock value or scary artwork per se, um, like you might get in a series like Witches, there is a lot of really great underlying horrific tones uh, and supernatural tones as well. Um, really, again, it's an exploration of ideas that could get real freaky, um, you know, if magic was more of an, uh, a real thing or a physical thing that manifested. Um, it's it's cool. It's great. The, the artwork is fantastic. The fact that it's black and white as well is wonderful. It's one of the same things that made Walking Dead so good, which I know is not on here. It wasn't that scary to me. Um, it is pretty horrific what happens to people. But anyway, anyway, um, Rachel Rising, um, I, I can't I can't recommend it enough. It's a nice long run, too. And you get to see how, you know, again, all the, the events that are happening affect people within Rachel's life. Um, and, and, you know, as, as things get crazier and crazier, um, those relationships get more and more strained with conflict and, and problems. It's, it's really great. I can't recommend it enough. So good, Rachel Rising. So those are five series. Now, look, I know there are a lot of fantastic horror comics, things like Crossed, again, Walking Dead, um, you know, nail biter. There's a whole bunch. There's a whole bunch. These are the five that I chose. If you've got more to recommend, hit us up in the comments down below. Let the other folks watching the video know what your thoughts are on horror comics as well. These are modern books again. So I apologize if you're looking for something more classic. Um, but anyway, thank you guys for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. We post content regularly. If you hit the notification bell, you'll know whenever we post a new video or go live. Hopefully, I know YouTube's uh, slacking sometimes on those notifications. If you're interested in soap, check out Dr. Squatch. They're a soap subscription service. They'll bring it right to your door. And with the link down in the description below, thanks to the hardcover comic and Dr. Squatch, you'll get free shipping on your order, which is pretty cool. Matt uses Dr. Squatch, absolutely loves them. Um, we do also have a Patreon if you're interested in that. We do hardcover comic giveaways, deluxe editions, omnibus, absolutes, all that fun stuff. It's great. Um, so check out the link down in the description below. It'll take you to our page. You can find out more details there. Thank you all very much for tuning in. Hope you guys are all staying safe. Hope everyone's doing well during the, uh, the, the quarantine here. And until next time, as always, you stay classy, Internet.